It's not every day you start the adventure of a lifetime. Day five, confirm. <laughs> um, leaving the absolutely mosquito infested campsite of the Newtson Dam area. Um, I've been wearing the bug net since I got here, except for when I was in my tent. And uh, yeah, just, geez, awful. They're terrible here. And they don't get dissuaded by bug spray either. Um, so there was an interesting post on the Paddlers page today um, and basically it was kind of a call out to kind of reconsider doing the entire Mississippi this year because of flooding and more rain forecasted which is going to make the flooding even worse. It, uh, it's already like the closing parts of the Mississippi that they don't do that, you know, unless it's bad. And um, it's just not getting better. So it's heartbreaking. It really, really is. I mean, I, any other year, you know, then you pick the year of the flood. Um, yeah. Talking with the uh, paddlers that I'm with, they uh, kind of have the same mindset as me. Is maybe we'll just go and see what it looks like. I mean, we still got a couple weeks up here in northern Minnesota, but um, it's been months and months and months of flooding, and it hasn't gotten any better. So I don't understand why it would at this point. So aside from that, today's a big day. We have to try to cross Lake Winnipegashish. Very uh, big lake, a lot of hard work. Um, a little bit of a breeze today, so I'm thinking I'm not gonna be able to just cut right across. But as anything, we'll have to see what it looks like when we get there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much an update for day five here. Um, not all the best news. Um, but we'll simply uh, see how things go. So we'll uh, paddle on. Lake, and you paddle, and you paddle, and then you finally turn that corner, and boom, the outlet to Lake Winnipegashish. Biggest expanse of water I ever plan on kayaking.
Alrighty. So, we are out on big old Lake Winnie Bagashi. Um, there's a wind coming out of the north. Go figure. So, crossing and uh, straight across is not going to be possible this time. Looks like we're going to basically be traveling the west and then along the north shore to get around this guy. So, it will probably take a better part of the day. We left the point coming out of the river at 2.12. So, it's just going to be a long grind. We're going to get a nice long look at the shoreline. So, um, looks just as big as last time. Just as clear. Uh, it's just such a beautiful area. I love being up here. Um, although this paddle will be brutal and the sad part is knowing what uh, reward we get for getting across and that's that portage straight up the uh, hill by the dam. So, But this will be a grind. Who will make it? What choice do we have? Crossing Lake Winnebagashish with any amount of wind can be extremely dangerous, so if you decide to go straight across, be ready for the possibility of very large waves that can swamp your boat. At 6.5 miles across at its narrowest point, if you were to capsize in the middle of the lake, you would be over 3 miles from shore, and there is a good chance no one will know you are out there. So please, be very careful. For whatever reason, I don't have any footage of me crossing Lake Winnie on this trip, so here is a clip from my 2018 Headwaters trip where I showed the view from the middle of the lake. Still out here, but uh, here's what it looks like. After paddling the west shore for a while, the winds break and we get calm waters. I make the decision to cross the lake and made it with no issues. All right, I've just landed here at the east side of Lake Winnie. Five minutes ago or so, I lightened the boat for a few minutes. Um, boy, pretty tired. This lake, man. This is my second time paddling across it, and God willing, my last. I uh, texted my wife through the GPS, told her to reserve me a spot here at the Winnie Dam Wreck area, and she did. Site eight, rock on, and uh, yeah. I cannot wait to get to it. I don't know where the paddlers are, um, Daryl and Jonathan. So hopefully they make it here tonight and they can stick here with me. So aside from that, I am gonna get doing and get this boat up this hill so I can get dinner going. I am starving. All right, day six on the Mississippi River. Leaving the Winnie Dam campsite. I'm definitely tired. I don't sleep good, which makes the next morning rough. Once I get paddling, I kind of perk up a little bit, so that makes it better. Um, yeah, I made the big crossing across Winnie yesterday, and today, hopefully, uh, the current will just kind of carry me where I need to go. I got a couple of river angels along the way that I want to stop and say hi to, and uh, we'll do that and continue on. My canoeing buddies are gonna take off. Well, they already took off, but they're a little ahead of me, and I don't think they're gonna make these stops, which is fine. They want to keep heading towards their um, goals for miles a day. Um, they have a set schedule. I don't. So, but yeah, that's the update for the day. So it's just a day of. Uh, Heading on down river, not lakes, down river. That's awesome.
Good morning. It is day seven on the Mississippi River. We have been out here now for one week. Um, it is now June 7th and we are leaving Leaning Willow campsite. Um, it's up a, a steep little hill and it's not mowed or maintained at all so it, uh, it's kind of a pain to get all your gear up there but it's doable. Um, <laughs> some of the most mosquitoes I've ever seen. There was a point in which uh, I was laying in the tent and they were getting uh, under the fly and onto the screen and I mean it literally sounded like NASCAR was like a couple miles away or something. It was just non-stop buzzing from the little guys. Uh, they're just incredible how vicious they are. Merciless. Um, today we should reach Grand Rapids and that'll be our first portages in a while. We're going to go around the Pokegama Dam and the Blandon Paper Mill Dam. Uh, Pokegama is 44 yards on the map. The Blandon Dam is 1200, so so that one will be a little more involved. Um, <clears throat> but a uh, couple wheels, so it shouldn't be uh, too big a deal. I have to confess something. I'm a cheater. Shortcut! <laughs> Literally just saved me like half mile, three quarters of a mile. I might as well get these ducks that are nesting here on this island too. Quick, quick, quick. So we just finished the portage around the Blandon Dam. Um, 
there was a portage assistance sign at the beginning and they will actually bring you around this dam and down to the landing. I wanted to do the actual portage just to show uh, what it would be like if you decided to do it. So it's about a 1200, mile, uh, 1200 yard portage and um, you basically walk through the town across a busy street and um, end up down river of the dam. I can't get you the best shot of it, but that is the bridge just down river from the dam and the dam is right behind it. So that's the best I can show you. Um, yeah, you know, if you don't have wheels, I highly recommend you getting the portage assistance. Um, if you do have wheels, it's doable, but it is still tough, so. All right, guys, so we just finished the second portage and uh, Grand Rapids, the Landing Dam. We went around Pokeyama and Landing Dam. Now we are heading downriver to our campsite, just about six miles or so. Um, we're gonna stop at Sutures tonight, and uh, yeah, just call it a, call it a day. Um, sounds like my wife's gonna come up on Saturday tomorrow and maybe get a hotel and then um, stay again with me on Sunday so I'll be able to get a day off the river and get in shower get food um, resupply and uh, then I'll be back out on the water so yeah that's the deal um, this is what it looks like down river from the Blandon Dam just nice and peaceful and calm and it's just kind of nice to be uh, be past those so that's about all I got for now